How long does it take to write a book that's 100,000 words? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, I mean, it really depends. I think for me, any particular book tends to take around a year. Um, I've known some writers who just like, bam, you know, they're, they're done in, you know, a couple months. And I, I've never been that person. I, I don't, that's magic to me. And then I know other writers who like, they'll take, you know, three years to write a book. And for me, I found that for whatever reason, I've, you know, I've written books that are more on the like 80,000 end. And then I've written books that are way higher, like on the, you know, 140,000. And it always seems to be about a year. <laughs> I think it's just kind of how roughly how fast my brain works through kind of a plot rather than the actual like word count. For me, it just, it tends to always be about a year. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Where does your process begin? Oh, funny enough, I think it begins with a lot of chaotic notes on my phone. <laughs> it's, I... I'll start with some sort of vague idea and it's usually because I've seen something that like, oh, I'm like, oh, that's really interesting if it's in a, in a movie or a book or, you know, old mythology, it could be kind of anything. And I start on a concept and then I kind of see what's being done. And a lot of times what I think it's going to be, it ends up going in a different direction and they didn't take it the way I wanted it or they didn't do what I thought they were going to do with it. And I was like, oh, why not? someone should do that. And so I'll, you know, write something down briefly on my phone. I'll be like, oh, you know, something about, you know, like an alien or like whatever it'll be. I'll have some sort of vague concepts and I'll be like, oh, or, you know, this interesting idea for a superpower or whatever. And it will be the first note and I will just make it real brief. And then something else will come to me about that same idea. And I go back to that note. And I kind of just like type something in like, oh, you could add this too. And that would be interesting. And by the time I finish whatever my current project is, I usually have at least one note that is just really long. And I'm like, oh, here's a, there's a story here. Like I've got a ton of bits and pieces. And then I go through from there and I try to actually kind of organize the notes. And so Sometimes it's things like chronological order, but there will also be like character notes in there and I'll be like, okay, so the character, this is all the stuff about this character, this is all the stuff about this character, and then here's kind of a chronological order of the events that I was thinking of. And it's it's been a really easy outlining process for me because I used to kind of do more of a, a intentionally structured approach where I would kind of make an outline and then each step I would go, what happens next? What happens next? What happens next? And it didn't flow as well. There wasn't as much of a kind of natural rhythm to it as when I took all these chaotic pieces and I just organized them. <laughs> I just put them in order. And then usually you'll see where the gaps are. It's like, oh, well, how do we get from, you know, this thing happening to this thing happening? Okay, and then a lot of times I'll just write in, something happens to make them go here, <laughs> or, you know, something vague, and I can go back when I'm finalizing that outline and kind of figure out what that is. And other times I will come to that when I'm halfway through a story, and I'll be like, oh, I never did figure this out. <laughs> I, should probably, I should probably do that now. But at that point, I know the characters better, I know the, the plot better, and I usually have an answer. And so it's it's been kind of a really easy way to go from concept and these scattered ideas to then outline. And from there, it's pretty easy to just start writing and, and going into it. Or like, I guess I do characters too, but kind of get like some character profiles in there as well. And then kind of just naturally happens. And are you getting sort of this download and writing in these notes when you're out in public or it, it's just across the board, it's everywhere? So it's it's a bit of everywhere. It's, I mean, sometimes, you know, it'll, it'll just be, you know, I have a lot of falling asleep, <laughs> you know, about to go to bed and I'm like, oh, oh, and I grab my phone and I like type ideas. And sometimes those ideas don't make sense in the morning. <laughs> but, um, Sometimes I am out in public or um, a lot of times I get ideas when I'm reading. You know, I'm reading something clever that someone else has been working on and they have this kind of 
spark of concept and I'm like, oh, you could use that. You could apply that to something else. You could do something else with it. Or like I said, I'll, I'll have these things that I expect that I'm, I'm reading something and I expect it to go a certain way or I think, ooh, are they gonna do this? This could be interesting. And then they don't take it and I go, well, if you're not gonna use that, I'm gonna use that because that's, that's kind of interesting to me. So like it does kind of happen all the time and sometimes it'll be, you know, I'm in the grocery store and I'm like, oh, idea. But I think more so than anything, it happens when I'm reading or watching something, I'm kind of, you know, interacting with other people's art in some way and I kind of get little chunks of inspiration from what they're doing and see how I can apply it to my own work. And so then you use this sort of holder of like something happens to get them from here to there. And is that because um, you're having fun with certain other parts and you don't want to stop and have to think about how does this logically happen? Yeah, I, I think it's it's a really different approach than when I first started writing because I used to kind of think like I have to have the answers, everything has to make sense, everything has to, you know, be laid out in such a way that it all comes perfectly together. And I downloaded Wattpad and I was like, okay, because I was curious about After. I don't know how much you guys know about After. Um, it's this fan fiction that was just wildly successful all around the world. It was about Harry Styles. It turned into a movie, and when the whole movie deal news came out and everything, I was like, what is this? I was like, this is fascinating to me. What, you know, I didn't know what real person fan fiction was. I didn't know how someone writes fan fiction about Harry Styles, and then it becomes a movie. It was all so curious to me. Um, so I read it, and it was like nothing I've ever read before because it was written by a totally novice author. And she was just having fun with it. She was just writing something she loved. And some of the plot points were just, there was no connection. It was just like, just happened. And I know there were a lot of authors who were like, oh, this is trash, this is garbage, this is no good sort of thing because she doesn't do those things. And to me, I kind of thought, but how interesting is that as a storytelling technique to do away with the rules of, you know, I have to tell the story so well that there are no holes. I have to do this perfect thing. She wrote the parts she wanted to write and didn't write the parts she didn't want to write. And like that kind of blew my mind in a way because I, you know, I have this, you know, traditional education on how to write. And, you know, I'm sure my professors would just be like, sobbing if they, if they were seeing this kind of stuff like you know oh you can't write like that and it's like this piece of art reached you know multiple millions of people that's that's insane and and they did it by just breaking all the rules and they were like i want to write these parts and i'm not going to connect them and it's you know it's kind of funny because sometimes you'd be reading it and someone would just show up and i feel like like, where'd this person come from? It's like, doesn't matter. It's not important. There's drama happening. You move on instantly because things are happening in your face and there's so much going on that you almost don't even care that it doesn't make sense. And I started trying to apply that to my own writing. I was just like, just, just write whatever. Just put it out there and you can clean it up later. And what ended up happening was that I would get to these points where I'd be like, oh, I haven't connected these at all. But by the time I got there, I knew enough about the story. I was familiar enough with what I was doing and my characters that I could connect it really quickly. And I could be like, you know what? I can fill in this gap really easily. It's not, it's not as hard as it seemed when I hadn't been working with these characters, when I hadn't been working in this universe. You know, I didn't have all these answers, but by the time I get to it, I'm, I'm in the groove, I have more of an understanding of what it is that I'm writing. And it's not that I've gone so much in that direction of, oh, I just let things you know, stay unconnected. It's just that I can make those connections rather quickly and it doesn't have to be you know, as large of a scene or as key to the story as I necessarily thought. I can find a way to stitch these together in a way that is you know, seamless and makes sense, but still has that kind of, you know, impact of, you know, going between interesting scene to interesting scene and not having a lot of downtime where you're just kind of like, come on, move along, I'm bored sort of thing. 
So almost the way TikTok or YouTube shorts, maybe someone that came from traditional filmmaking would be like, well, this isn't filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Was it something similar to that with After? Oh, like, yeah. I mean, quick? you will still see lots of, uh, lots of authors just like, oh, this is not literature. This is the downfall of writing as you know it kind of thing. And I feel like anytime someone has created something and someone else finds value in it, that is valuable art. And for me, you know, like, do I think that, you know, a literature professor would see her work and be like, oh, it's fantastic. No, they, they wouldn't like it. And that's fine. It's not for them. You know, it's, it's for a specific audience. It's for a younger female audience who is interested in this particular person and these particular concepts. And it's connected with them. And, you know, the fans who love this book, and it's a book series now, they love it. It is so, it is so deeply ingrained in, in who they are and, and their experience with, with reading. And to me, it's like, well, anything that is that impactful, anything that has that much effect on the people who are reading it or interacting with it, like there is value there. There is something to be learned there, even if it's not the traditional rules, even if what you learn is that you should break those rules. And so has Harry Styles commented on? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I know I looked into it at some point and I think he hadn't at that point. I'm sure he must have said something, but it's, I know they, when they published this book, they did change the names and it was, it was a um, very alternate universe. So it wasn't really even about him. I think it kind of used him more as a, as a starting point for the writing, but it was, it was fascinating. Just all the, all the rules they were breaking and the, the kind of things they were doing, you were seeing kind of the bare bones of why stories work because it didn't have all the, all the training and all the fluff. And I, I think as far as I know, the author is just, you know, a novice author, not classically trained and just kind of went into it from a fan's mindset, from someone who loves, you know, the, the topic in some way. And it was such a, it was such a neat thing to kind of see how you get the story down to its bare bones. You don't need all of this extra, extra stuff around it. And the readers don't mind. They don't, they don't mind. They want entertainment and they want that, that pure love of, of the, the story of the characters. And when the author has that, you can kind of let a lot of else slide. And so that's exclusively on Wattpad right now? I, it's, so it's, it's also a physical book. Oh, um, I okay. mean, it's in bookstores now. It's, it's a big deal. Huh. Um, I know uh, one of the movies came out during, during the pandemic and it was like number one in like theaters. It was one of the only things getting people back into theaters. And there's, there's this tremendous fan base for this book and, and you know, for a lot of books like it. And I think it's, it's telling us that, you know, maybe what readers value is not necessarily the rules and the structure and all the things that they teach you in school. And you can use those tools to create a really powerful story. But if you don't have the foundation that clearly that author had and a lot of authors have of a really fascinating, compelling story, then, you know, those tools aren't going to save you. Those tools aren't going to make a good story but you can have a good story and not have the tools and people will still come to it. Yeah, it seems like anytime somebody is like this outlier and breaks the rules, like maybe sort of the old guards mm -hmm. are like, no, this isn't right. And I'm sure the same thing happened to Tarantino. I'm sure it happened to David Foster Wallace. You know, he's writing this thousand page book with things in the footnotes and all these different things. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, no, that's not real fiction. So it's interesting to see older generations push against something if it works. Yeah, know? and I've noticed too that the ones that always get the hardest time are the people who write for young women. It's, you know, and it's not just writing, it's music, you know, it's anyone creating stuff for young women, they're kind of seen as less than because, oh, well, young girls like that. So that's, you know, trivial, that's not as important. And you know, romance often falls into that category. The case of After After was like a new adult book for like 
you know, college age young women. And it was like, oh, it's the, you know, it's, it's superficial because, you know, it's the things young girls like, it's romance. And we tend to downplay those things like the opinions of, you know, girls and women aren't as valid, as important. Art that's made for them is, you know, less valid and less important. And of course, it was written by a woman, a young woman. And it was like, oh, well, there you go. She's not a real author. She doesn't count. Like, I think society is more willing to quickly dismiss women and be like, like, oh, oh, you don't count the things you like don't count. And, you know, anytime someone is writing in that field, they're going to get even more criticism. Sure. And I think it's a threat, too, if people do vote with their dollars or their views. Mm -hmm. And it is someone that's like considered a quote unquote outlier um, that that can also ruffle feathers. <laughs> oh, I've, I've seen many people um, basically complaining about about books like after, you know, or anything on Wattpad that they don't see as quality. And they're saying, well, you know, oh, people only want to read trash. People only want to read, you know, you know, vampires making out or what, whatever. And, you know, people don't want to read good fiction. If they want to read good fiction, they'd be reading my stuff sort of thing. And, and there's this sense of entitlement, like my stuff is good. People should be reading my stuff. People should want my stuff. And the fact that they don't is a reflection upon their poor taste. It's a reflection upon, you know, how they don't understand or appreciate good literature. And I feel like I always wonder why people aren't reflecting on those moments when, when you're seeing like this thing is doing very well and people really love it and nobody loves the thing I'm working on. I think sometimes you need to ask the question of why does nobody love the thing I'm working on? Is there an audience for it? Is there something that I can learn from this other thing that I don't understand and translate that into me making a better story that more people can relate to and are interested in? And I think not enough people ask that question. They just get up in arms that they don't like it. It's unfamiliar. They're frustrated. They think my stuff is quality, your stuff is low quality, and people should like my stuff and not yours. And quality, especially in art, is just so subjective. And you can't, you can't really have that, you know, that mindset when you're a writer of people should like my stuff. Well, if you're going to be that way, just write whatever the heck you want and tell them they should like it. Like, it doesn't really matter, but if you're going to be open to learning and open to growth, then you're going to find things in other people's work that's successful that help you grow and help tell you why your stuff isn't working as well.